Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. When he comes to the United States, Adam Gorowski initially struggles in finding employment. He oftentimes irks the elite in Boston the wrong way where he initially settles. He challenges, for example, leading political voices to debates. But he's very active, he understands, he has an acronym for understanding the situation in the United States. And during the Crimean War from 1853 to 56, he publishes a number of books related to Russia, serfdom, slavery. He paints the Russian Tsar as an evil oppressor. He has a grand vision he presents for a new Russia that he thinks will put the country on a better footing. He calls for the emancipation of serfs. He does remind, however, people in the United States that they ought to be more critical, too, of the Ottoman Empire, which is not as rosy an ally and pretty and good an ally as many people think because they hate Russia and its oppressive nature. At the same time, he is starting to acclimatize to the situation in the United States. He hates compromise. He doesn't think that it's the right way forward. Slavery's history has shown that it's the wrong way to go and that slavery needs to end. Slavery is a corrupting force in Gorovsky's mind. He looks to Russia and he sees how it's an oppressive and minority controlled state. And he translates that to the United States and says it's the same here. That here too the planter aristocracy has created with its minority base an oppression. He's hopeful that the inauguration of Abraham Lincoln will bring change. Unfortunately, he is extremely disappointed with Lincoln's inaugural address. He thinks he is weak. He looks at Lincoln's cabinet and is not very confident of what this cabinet will do. A lot of scorn goes to Secretary of State William Seward, whom Gorowski believes incompetent and ill-suited for the job. That was the importance of international relations during this conflict. Seward isn't cut out for it, which is quite ironic, as Gorowski will actually work for Seward in the State Department. At the same time, Gorowski believes that in this conflict, the war of the rebellion, as he terms it, 
quoting here. Not self-government is on trial, and not the genuine principle of democracy. It is an unprincipled, infamous oligarchy risen in arms to destroy democracy, as he claims the South is doing. He takes all legitimacy from the southern states. As the war goes on, he often provides advice, unsolicited advice, may I add, to the military leadership of the United States. When they don't listen, Grosky starts to hate them. He dislikes Winfield Scott, thinks the man not very capable of it. George B. McClellan, once he stops responding to suggestions by Grosky, Grosky starts calling him, this is a personal favorite of mine, Mac Napoleon. He has similar choice words for other commanders of the Army of the Potomac that he also thinks weren't working well. He is an extreme critic as the war continues even of President Lincoln, thinking that Lincoln's weakness brought about Spanish expansion attempts in the Dominican Republic and Peru eventually, as well as the French expedition against Mexico that had culminated with the appointment of Maximiliano as the new emperor. As a result, Gorowski opposes the re-election of President Lincoln in 1864. Gorowski is a fascinating character. He has revolutionary experiences, but he also has constantly switched sides. You never can trust what the man says to be true, honest opinion, lasting opinion. But it gives us some very interesting and critical insights into the United States during the War of the Rebellion. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.